Hey guys, this is Mac again with another vlog. Today is another tips video, and this is handgun tips for three gun. These are just some tips and ways that I practice on a budget and with significant time constraints in order to make sure that I get the most out of my practice for three gun. So handgun is usually the portion that I think I have observed most people being most comfortable with. That's because a lot of competition shooters migrated to three gun from one of the other shooting disciplines like USPSA or IDPA or IPSC. Um, I happened to be uh, the complete opposite end of the spectrum. I didn't pick up handguns until just a couple of years ago and um, I had shot shotgun and rifles extensively before I ever even fired a handgun for the first time. So this is an area of weakness that I have identified for myself and one that I really try hard to practice and practice correctly because it does hold me back. I notice my scores on stages which are handgun heavy uh, usually uh, suffer a little bit. So I have started to tailor my practice around uh, trying to improve my weaknesses. And fortunately, since I video everything that I do, uh, either when I'm practicing or especially competitions, I'm able to identify weaknesses. So. Here are some tips uh, and things that I do when I practice uh, in order to cover the wide variety of things that you might see uh, in the handgun portions of three gun stages. So number one, uh, the biggest thing that you can do at home is dry fire. Um, don't believe everything you read on the internet, but dry firing is, is okay for your handgun. You're not going to destroy your Glock 34 just by dry firing it. Um, so dry firing at home, whether or not you decide you want to use snap caps or whatever, um, is one of the best things that you can do for muscle memory and proper uh, trigger finger placement and proper grip is the biggest thing. Something I struggle with is my grip. Um, I noticed that for at least probably the first year and a half or two years of shooting my handgun, I was using an incorrect grip. So um, now I've had to sort of fight against that and one of the ways that I do that is by practicing my grip inside my house and dry firing. So with my Glock 34 here that is completely safe and unloaded, um, I will just be watching TV or sitting on the couch or whatever, or maybe sitting up here um, browsing some forums and picking out a spot on the wall and dry firing and um, maintaining that every time I grab the handgun that I've got the proper grip and then dry fire. And you'll be surprised over time um, if you do things like try to make sure that the sight doesn't move when you pull the trigger or um, you know try to balance something on top of the slide or on top of the sight to make sure that it doesn't fall off um, when you pull the trigger. Um, those are things that over time you won't maybe realize it, but they're ingraining themselves into your muscle memory. And those will help, uh, particularly in some of the areas that I'm going to get to here in just a minute. Another big issue that I have uh, is the draw. So almost every stage, uh, and well I guess in fact, unless you're grabbing the handgun off a table or something, almost every stage you're going to have to draw your handgun from your holster. And uh, when you're on a timer and you're trying to be as quick as possible, you almost without fail are not going to get the proper grip on that handgun, at least for me anyway. Um, I struggle to get the proper grip on my handgun when I'm pulling it out of the holster. So that's another easy thing that I can practice here at home. And one of the ways that I practice it on the range, and this is another great ammo uh, conservation tip because, um, you know, I. I'm on a limited budget and I don't just have hundreds of rounds that I can go out and throw down through my handgun. So uh, what I'll try to do is I run a drill where I try to draw my handgun and get one shot on target in under one second. It's a popular drill for various reasons, but it helps me get the proper grip because if I don't get the proper grip, I'm not going to hit what I'm shooting at. And I, I try to use a a pretty good distance target, usually a steel plate at like 15 to 20 yards. Because that makes me get that front sight in sharp focus with the proper grip and get, put a good trigger pull uh, on that target. Um, and 
I use one second part time uh, in order to make me do that, not as quickly as possible, but to put a little bit of stress to the situation. Now, do I care if I do it in less than one second? No, absolutely not. I could really could not care at all if I do it less than one second. The point in using the part time is to make myself get the proper grip and get used to how it feels and how I do that under the stress of a timer. And also be able to put the first shot on the target because you will find after you shoot a good bit that usually your first shot is probably your worst. That's why some shooters uh, might say, you know, you want to start out on an easier target or shoot a big target first because you have more room for air because the first shot out of the handgun right out of the draw is usually the worst you know for a weird grip or an incorrect grip or a bad trigger pull bag technique etc whatever so that's a drill that I use and I have some video here of me running this drill uh, just as, so you can see how I do it and this really helps me a lot um, the next biggest thing that I struggle with is distance shooting um, and any good three gun stage designer is gonna test you out on your handgun skills now whether it's a really small steel plate you know a little bit further out there where you really have to make a precision shot or maybe it's a standard um, cardboard ipsic target that's partially obscured by a barrel or it's at an angle or something and it's really far down there and you got to put two good shots on it um, you're at some point gonna get tested so I find that it's helpful for me to do most of my practice at that distance because um, over time if I can consistently uh, make those shots and feel confident making those shots then when I get presented with that in competition hopefully it'll be a little bit easier for me so just you know those are typical things that give me trouble it's the really small steel um, maybe the little poppers or the little fall down knock down plates at like 20 25 maybe it's further than that yard so I always practice at 25 yards I don't care what I go and do um, most indoor ranges will at least be 25 yard ranges so if I am forced to shoot paper targets um, I will shoot at least some portion of that day at 25 yards and I'll try to do it in a relatively small amount of space so maybe it's taking a um, taking a silhouette target and just aiming for the head um, because aim small miss small it's a, a really good uh, really good sort of uh, belief to, to live by aim small miss small make your targets as small as possible that way you really have to force yourself to have good fundamentals and good techniques and then uh, hopefully if you're gonna miss you only miss by a little bit and you'll still hit that target when you're in competition and then the final thing the most helpful drill for me is the plate rack the plate rack is my Achilles heel um, I cannot tell you how many wasted rounds I have dumped on plate racks um, over my competition career as short as it has been so I have modeled my practice to to follow plate racks now I can't afford a plate rack um, but what I can afford is um, fairly inexpensive uh, 6 and 8 inch round AR500 steel which you can pick up off eBay uh, usually shipped for free very inexpensive and what I've done is I've picked up a few of these and these are the same size as the plates on a plate rack and I will make myself shoot those in rapid succession and I you know I have to repeat several times because I don't have six of them at this point but um but this essentially simulates the plate rack and um, like I said it's my Achilles heel and I've learned over time that I typically get in a hurry and I start pulling my shots uh, low left because I'm, I'm getting too much trigger finger and I'm, I'm pushing the gun so um, like I said identifying your weaknesses and then tailoring your practice toward those weaknesses is a big part of, uh, of practice and the best tip that I can really give you is practice uh, your weaknesses and that's the way I've changed my practice because number one I have limited time I have to drive about an hour and a half to my parents farm um, we actually recently moved closer to home we used to live about uh, more than three hours away from where my parents live uh, but still it's it's kind of a big deal for me to make a trip over there to be able to practice because I cannot practice the way I want to practice at a public range um, they're not going to let me set up steel um, they're not going to let me you know do rapid succession and, and three gun type stages 
So I have to go to private land uh, for that, and that's my family farm. So I have to drive to get there. So my time is limited, and my resources are definitely limited. So designing and coming up with drills like that one-shot drill that I mentioned helped me conserve ammo, but also maximize the time that I have to practice. So um, like I said, you can do a lot of practice just at your house for free. Dry firing is uh, probably the best thing that you can do. And um, you can do it while you're watching TV, whatever. So um, this is Mac again. Um, hopefully these were some important uh, tips that help you in uh, shooting your handgun for three gun. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Click that like button for me below. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, where I always like to uh, bring a vlog or a quick tips video um, because I love shooting three gun and um, I love getting better at whatever I do whether it's uh, shooting or other things. Um, I constantly strive to get better and um, that's sort of the purpose of my channel is not only does it help me get better but I hope somebody watching helps you get better as well. So once again thanks for joining me. Um, I'm always glad when you guys tune in and as always this Mac be safe out there.